my wife actually I see her all the time. So far it's okay. She has she wants <laughs> That's good. she's okay having me at home. <laughs> and we spend a lot of afternoons on the deck having, you know, having dinner or walking the dog and we just really it's it's a peaceful time. It's almost as if we needed this, you know. Yes. And the earth is rejoicing, the right. climate is improving, the animals are coming back everywhere. The birds, I hear more birds now than, than ever. Yeah. And I am relearning how to play the oboe, yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I am reading a lot about Bach, reading a lot yes. about J.S. Bach. Exactly. Yes, interested in Bach and Brahms and Bruckner and right. just, just trying to learn as much as I can about who, the things who that... Who would you have said that yeah. was the, or has been the most important composer in the development of the oboe or the oboe repertoire? A traditional classical music? Well, definitely uh, Bach, uh, Handel, Telemann, uh, Haydn and Mozart. Yeah. Yeah, Haydn right. and Mozart. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, even uh, 19th century composers like Donizetti. Donizetti wrote the uh, English horn concertino when he was 18 years old, when oh. he was a student in Bologna, for a friend of him. Everybody knows. Uh, you know, his big operas. Right. You know, but nobody but knows know that he wrote that. <laughs> an English horn concerto. I can tell you a whole story about that. But, wow. uh, you know, uh, 19th century was, was kind to the oboe and the English horn. And, of course, uh, the French composers, Debussy, Ravel, yes, uh, they, the they wrote a lot school. of great music for the woodwinds. Yes. And St Strauss wrote an oboe concerto, which actually right. was encouraged by uh, John Delancey, who, as the soldier, met he, are you there oh, i thought yeah. i lost you okay. uh, jo john delancey as a soldier in the second world war met richard strauss really and he be he asked him he begged him to write an oboe concerto oh, wow. Wow. and he did uh of course it, he didn't premiere it some german guy premiered it but he wrote <laughs> an oboe concerto <laughs> well he played it john, uh, john delancey played it and recorded it and is, of course is a beautiful proponent of the piece right that's wonderful. wonderful. And uh, let's uh, hear some of the art of Mr. Diaz here. He sent us a recording. Tell us a little bit about the recording, Pedro. Is this the video that I made for my colleague? I think so. Or, yes. for, hmm? or is it music? Instant music? Yes, yes, yes. That's the, that's the video I made. Oh for a colleague of mine, yes. Vincent Leonti. Right. And Vincent Leonti uh, passed away as a victim of COVID-19. He was our colleague. We were all shocked. Uh, he actually sat next to me. And uh, we were very good friends. So I thought it would be a, uh, a great tribute to play for him the solo, of the, the prelude of the third act of Tristan and Isolde. Wow, that's great. Uh, and so I did it here on my, on my backyard, here in Irvington. We have a nice pond, and it has a little castle which resembles, you know, the Cornwall and, and all that. Uh -huh. So I, I actually hired, uh, I, well, it was pro bono, but I found a professional guy with a drone uh -huh. and a professional sound person who helped me, uh, you know, make the sound. Uh, as good as possible because of the different camera angles and all that. So I have some wonderful. good people help me with it. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Wow. That's wonderful. Wow. And he, very he was a sweet touching. Calling. Yeah. I, I don't think, I, I think I remember him, but he was a Julia about the time I was living. Yes. And he, yeah. he was a sweet man and his father uh, also a teacher and a violinist. Yes. And, uh, and Vince was also a, the, the conductor of the Westchester Youth Orchestra. That's right. In which my, my daughter was playing there. Right. So uh, he, was, he was a great man. He was we one of felt the first so terrible. victim of this epidemic. I know. I remember yeah. hearing it. Yeah. It was tragic. Yeah. Very tragic. Very so job. do we have the music, Mr. Dowdy's? Great.
Yes, a beautiful production, Pedro. Very moving. Yeah, very Thank moving. You. Very moving. Yeah, I can't stop uh, feeling very emotional. Yeah, every time. And when I see that. that. Wow. Um, oh my goodness. It's, <laughs> uh, oh, it's a wonderful opera. It's, it's a wonderful. A beautiful. That's a beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That yeah. You yeah. Your that's, good that's great. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. That's well, I can see it's the only thing we can do. That's right. In this, it, in this time, we can only try to uh, contribute with our best art. It's right. all we can do. Well, Everybody else can take care of the other. We have art to contribute, and there, there's a good feeling in that, which I think, which is what we're trying to do here, is bring things together like that and it's it's not just about it's about sad times too I'm sorry. Yeah. I I think this we take this opportunity not only to dedicate this program to you but those who has succumbed to this horrible epidemic and especially the ones that are in the, our musical world and that was great Oh. Really, yes. Just, that is I didn't Thank you very much. That was beautiful, very beautiful piece. Transcendental. I, I was uh, in the audience, uh, I, that must be around 10, 9 years ago when I saw Tristan with Maestro Barenboim conducting it. Oh, yes. Met. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I remember that solo. Yeah. Oh. It was interesting Thank you. because that, I went with my dear friend. Uh, City Rico, who's probably watching us from New York. And that was the last time I saw also Claude Frank, Maestro Claude Frank, who was oh, with his yeah. daughter Pamela. <coughs> they were in the audience. And, and, well, I, I didn't study with him, but I certainly heard him many, because he was yeah, Professor at, Bennington. At Bennington, While yeah. I was there right, in right. Uh, the 50s. And Absolutely. we used to go faithfully and hear him yeah, play trio. Right. Oh my goodness! That's where my that's where my wife and I met in Bennington at Bennington oh, really? College. Yes. I didn't know that. When <laughs> when were you there at Bennington? Well, I was a coach in their summer music festival. They have a music festival for for adults, uh -huh. and she's an amateur violinist. Happens to be a great violinist. She used to be like a like a child prodigy, but now she uh, has a real job. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, Be careful uh, when uh, you say that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, some some great um, uh, some great uh, minds uh, around the United States uh, go to this camp to play music. You know, right. mathematicians and scientists and uh, and Lucy was there, and uh, we met there. And uh, oh, it's a yeah. lovely place. It was I mean, very nice. Yeah. I was there. I graduated in '56. And you know who was in my class was Alan Arkin, who was a music major at the time and a drama major. Yes. And he went on to do very well. Uh, we had a little singing group together. It was oh. fun. He played That's a cool. hell of a guitar. Yes. <laughs> very t mm -hmm. I'm trying to get him to come on and join us one of these days. But that was. Yeah, he should join you. Yes. Absolutely. Well, I'll get him. I'll get him when time comes. Right. Anyway, and we also had Elias Lopez Ovade, mm -hmm. oh, yes. the <laughs> pianist, who graduated oh, from yes. Bennington College. He was there with while Claude I was Frank there, of course. Great. At that time. Claude yes, Frank. Yes, and yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. it was an interesting time for sure. Right. And that's it. You know, Bennington, I haven't been there. Um, uh, a young man who, during, I used to have the non resident term students come and stay and help during the winter because I always need a lot of help. And then as the hotel grew, we needed the rooms, so we stopped doing that. <laughs> yeah. So couldn't uh. put students up anymore during the winter, but they, they were wonderful. We had a great time. That's great. So how much longer are you guys planning to have? Uh, how, how many episodes have you done so far? How many episodes have we done? I think this is number 30. This is number 30. Mm, I think we've That's done great. But we started, I mean, been formally. We did some before, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And yes. we have been, I think it's more than that, but we've been, uh, we just play it every, it's just week by week. All I know is that we have uh, people planned up through the end of next week and uh -huh. publish the calendar so people can plan their uh, visits with their favorite instruments and musicians. And mm -hmm. we're crossing all the fields of 
winds, piano, older, young, established uh, teaching. And we're just trying with this to catch a picture of what's happening to your lives uh, now that all these stages are closed. And I think you're probably going to be the longest to suffer because I don't know where, well, how we're going I'm not to planning. I'm not planning to suffer. I'm going to take <laughs> make Suffer. the best out of this. That's good. I forgot to do. Considering I don't yeah. think these yeah. theaters are going to open for a while. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to figure no. it out. No. It should be yeah. interesting. Well, I, I'm do that. I've got a couple of projects that I'm working on. You know, uh, I've been taking a little bit of a break from music, understandably so. But I have some composers that are maybe writing some duets, maybe for English horn and bass, or English horn and flute, or... Um, you know, guitar, and I'm planning to do the, the thing where the musicians play together. Well, um, we should do an English horn and piano. You should what? commission one. We can do that. I mean, yeah. it's for some people, it could get tiresome yeah. to see it on, on the screen, but I, I'm going to try to do that. But I also have a channel that I started for record collectors and audiophiles mm. um, because I have some experience with the, with the hi-fi stuff. So it's called the Audiophilos y Locos. <laughs> I like that. That's very good. The Audiophilos y Locos, todos tenemos un poco. <laughs> and so, That's great. Wonderful. And so the channel, I'll, I'll send you a link. You just, you're welcome yes, to go sir. and subscribe and hit the bell and all that, okay? All that stuff. So, <laughs> uh, well, you see it but, brings uh, us creative people out yeah. of Yeah, the well, woodwork, it's in Spanish. It? And I, I have a big group from Spain and from Argentina, uh -huh. Mexico and the U.S. and from Puerto Rico, too. And I talk about records. I talk about hi-fi. But I, I also recommend a classical piece every day that the people can listen to and uh -huh. they are appreciative of it. The idea was originally to bring people out of the cave and bring them into the house, into the opera house. Uh, but you know how that ended. Now, the thing is... I. <laughs> I managed to do some really nice interviews. I interviewed Simon Rattle. Whoa. And I had a record signing where I gave him my records and he signed them. And I gave him records that he didn't even know existed. Really? And I, you were going to be one of my... You, I'm going to interview you too, Kiko. Really? Well, oh, wow. Yeah. He'd be, about it. He'd be very happy to be <laughs> on board. Nice Absolutely. to rattle. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, there look at go. that. The audio philosophy. Yeah. Locos. 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 <laughs> well, That's good great. for you. This is wonderful to hear about. You see? This, this is the kind of thing we like to hear. Creative. My daughter Juliet is a star. My daughter Juliet, she's one of the stars in the show. Ah, wonderful. Yeah. And my this dog Coco, you'll always be my bring dog. These incredible outlets. And yeah. people have these other talents that they don't know. And it's a chance to, you know, bring them out into the open. And sometimes. We feel shame for being classical musicians because we're not out there right. on the mainstream. And so when I, I approached this show very carefully when I started, I talk about like, uh, you know, uh, rock, rock from the 80s and little classical. And I was afraid that if I talk too much about classical, people would run away. But it's actually turned out to be the other way. People yeah. ask me, Pedro, you're a musician. Please tell me what to listen to. Recommend music. Uh, you know, and I recommend a Bruckner symphony, yeah. and they love it. I yeah, recommend Mahler, and like, thank you, Pedro. I want, it. I want more. Dame mas. That's so uh, wonderful. Now tell me, uh, let's give it's a little an honor plug for, me. for what you're doing. Yeah. When does this appear? How often do you do it? Give us a little more uh, information so we can pass it on to and our to listeners. The, the collaborator. Well, uh, if they just go to uh, the Audiophilos y Locos and subscribe, they'll get a, and hit the bell, they'll get a notification. Um, oh, there we are. Thing where I, I, I usually have a morning thing where I answer questions or I discuss different things, and I recommend classical music uh, to the, to the hi-fi fans. Right. And, but I also I have interviews. I've made a lot of interviews of people from the industry but also musicians. I just interviewed the English horn player in the Berlin Philharmonic, my counterpart, oh, wow. Dominique oh, Wollemer. Wow. <laughs> and you see, we've been modulating on the same frequency. You see? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I also have on, on Sundays, I have a, uh, a live show at, at noon. And so, you know, 
I expect to talk about equipment, but I also talk about music. Uh, I, I enjoy it, and I, it, it brings joy to me to know that I, I've changed some people's lives. People that say, I never listened to classical until I met you. Oh, mm -hmm. that's and wonderful. that, to me, that just justifies As, the whole yes, of course exactly. Exactly. existence. Absolutely. What kind of a following do you have now? Do you have an idea of how many people are regularly tuning in? My daughter is ashamed because I only have 1,500 uh, uh, subscribers and the, the 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 things that she sees online, you know, like PewDiePie, they, they have a hundred million subscribers. <laughs> oh, don't let that. Discourage. No, she's not ashamed. She just yeah. she teases me. She teases me. Well, but uh, I have a, a nice crowd. I've only been doing it for five months and right. fifteen hundred subscribers. That's great very people good. Uh, and a that's great helpful. educator. Yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Been doing it for yeah, absolutely. Oh yes. Yeah. So that's, that's absolutely. Great. And that's uh, people from hear. Spain. Yes. People from Spain, from Argentina. I would have never thought that I would make so many friends. We have a good following from Argentina and from Mexico. Well, we need to, uh, we need to cross our, our connections here because yes. we're kind of doing yeah. a similar thing. Right. Uh, we're doing well, it right it's now on a daily basis, but yeah, we... Even from Dubai, they're, they're, they're watching us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, because that's because you're famous, Kiko. No, you're it famous. has nothing to do with that. <laughs> it's just the marvel and the of uh, the internet is is fantastic. How you far are, we can here reach, which uh, audiences the, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, the name Jose Ramos Santana is a household name <laughs> since I was <laughs> since I was ten years old. I've been hearing Jose Ramos Santana. Oh my God. <laughs> El Dios. Well, right beside me, right beside me. Yeah, it's an I'm honor for me. Say. Yeah. Oh, that's yes. But we could play a show for both channels, you know? Pedro, yeah, could, they, call that a, that. they call it a collab. We should do collab. a collab. Yeah, we should do a we collab. We should do a collab. <laughs> I think that would be great. Yeah. We need to Absolutely. talk about this a little bit more. Because I now, I was talking idea. to Pedro before the show, and the last recollection of Have of Pedro is one summer I came here. I just most have graduated from the Juilliard School. But I have met you before uh, at the conservatory or somewhere. And I go into this um, audio store. I was at, uh, was it Fisher or one of, do you remember one of the big, uh, uh, <coughs> maybe it was a German uh, audio. BMW. BMW, BMW? speakers? Yeah, the B speakers, and right. W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B and and w. you were working there. You were, you just graduated. You went to school where? Tell us. At Juilliard. Oh, you went I to went to school at Juilliard. Too. So it was yeah. after me, after me. Yeah, it was after yes. me. And you just after came that. and you yes. started here. And you were here well, for a uh, little while. And then all of a sudden I know you left the island. I thought you went directly to New York. But you told me he, was, he went to South Africa. Yes, I was hearing. I yeah. Was hearing. My, my first orchestra job was in South Africa. In Puerto Rico, after I graduated from Juilliard, I played in the Banda Estatal. Okay. Right. And with Lito Peña. And it was great because I got to play uh, concerts on every square, on every town in Puerto Rico. And I got to know so many great towns, you know, uh, it, was, right. it was fine. Right. Right. Well, but I, it was hard because I had to compete with the things behind me. So... I it kind of developed my sound a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I had competition. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're great musicians, great, great banda. And uh, yeah. Lito Peña, is Lito Peña, I mean, um, Cuco Peña is the conductor now, right? The conductor, yes. right, exactly. And he's come very often. And he was also a victim of the COVID-19, but he's really? doing very well. Yeah, he, so he, he did very well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good yeah, for him. Right, yeah, Thank goodness. Yeah, great. It's yeah, not yeah. been easy. Not been easy. For all yeah. Of us. And uh, ah. now there's going to be some very sad stories, yeah. but we'll keep what? on the musical Talking theme around. happier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not that Tristan and Isolde <laughs> yes. are that yes, happy yes, either. Yes. No. <laughs> but there's but we, you know, we just had this pianist from Moscow yesterday, uh, Pavel Nesesin, oh. and he played the arrangement of Liszt Wagner. Of the oh uh, the Liebestod. prelude and Liebestod? Yes. yes the prelude and the Liebestod? Uh, yeah yes yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah wonderful yeah, well, that's lovely yeah. well so you know that uh, we're having a great fun 
time yeah. doing. I want to show you something that interviewing you guys. And I want to show you this another plug. Aha! Uh -huh. This is bel canto. it's my album of and bel canto English horn. Aha! Uh -huh. And uh, I'm sure your my friend will put it on the screen from right. the from the list from the YouTube list. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want to give you a little anecdote about this. I, here I played the Donizetti concertino oh, yeah, that yeah. I was telling you right. for English horn and orchestra. Uh -huh. And uh, my colleagues of the Metropolitan Opera donated their time to, to do that. a very cool. They, they, the orchestra here is the orchestra from the Met, uh, you well, know, on a, on a day off, on their only day off. On their only day off. <laughs> That's wonderful. In, in cold, on a cold Sunday in February. Aha. Uh -huh. and, and the conductor is Ricardo Fritza, who's a oh, renowned nice. conductor. Uh, he conducts the Arena di Verona, and, right. you know, he's recorded on the, the London label and very well-known conductor. Right. He's conducted also in the Met, Chicago Lyrics, San Francisco, right. and Dallas. And so he, he was actually his idea because uh, he, is, he loved Donizetti, and ah. now he is the director of the Donizetti Institute in Bergamo. Ah. After, the, after, the, after the fact, he became that. Really? But what I was going to say, I'll, I'll take a little time only, but um, we only know a version of this concerto that it's in G, but the native key of the English horn is in F. Okay. There it is. So... Um, it, that was because the score w it was in Paris, and a friend of Heinz Holliger copied it from the score. Uh -huh. But I went on a pilgrimage when I was in Alba teaching uh, in Italy. I, I went to Bergamo, mm -hmm. and I went to because I wanted to find out why did he write it in G and not in F. Uh -huh. uh, did he make a mistake, or maybe the instruments were different back then? It was a tuning standard or something like that. So. Uh, what did you find out? I, I, I went to the Institute, uh, Donizetti Institute in Bergamo, and the guy had no idea. He said, you're the first English horn player that works in here. And he had, in fact, the Peters edition of the concerto in G. Uh -huh. and, and then he arranged for me to see the, the Bologna library in Bologna, where they have all the manuscripts yes. from the school, from the Liceo Musicale of Bologna, and I met with the musicologists there, and they gave me the original parts for the orchestra oh and the solo English horn part to see with wow. gloves. And it turns out that there's the 1816, uh, not the score, because the score is mm -hmm. in Paris, but the parts in G, but then there's another set of parts that says transporto. Ah. And they were in F. That are F tra so, transported to so, F. Uh -huh. So the piece was never played in G, never. So, oh, look at that. And, and, so and why this would that is, happen? This is a critical uh, edition based on that music that I found wow. about five years ago in, in Bologna, and it's been printed by Theodore Presser. Oh, great. Uh, great they printed great, the edition, great. which is based on the Bologna parts that I found. Uh -huh. The reason why we played it in G is because uh, this guy, Raymond Meilan, he went to the library in Paris and found the score and he copied from the score. So uh, there was a mistake. My, uh, my very own musicological, musicological, I'm not a musicologist. <laughs> anyway, my very, bad, uh, my very bad theory is that Donizetti wrote it for his friend and said, here's the concerto I wrote for you. And he said, no, but it's in G. My English horn is in F. And I said, OK, we'll transpose it. That's right. It will make sense. What happened is that jo uh, Giovanni Mahir, um, oh, I forgot, uh, Donizetti's teacher uh -huh. in Bergamo, uh, uh, he was uh, a very well-known musician. They call him the father of the opera, Giovanni Mahir. Mm -hmm. He had horns, French horns, that were in G. Uh. He wrote in this key a lot. And maybe yeah. Donizetti, as a kid, picked it up. He thought it yeah, was in G. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, how long did this take? <laughs> it's a great story. <laughs> you know, I was going to say <laughs> when you finish story. playing that it's solo of Tristan that I just love, I have become so fascinated with this English horn sound and, uh, and the oboe sound. I think for me, it's my favorite woodwind instrument. I just love their, their sound. It's fantastic. Well... When I play the English horn, all I want to do is sound like Rafi. <laughs> I want to sound like a cello. 
No, you sound great. <laughs> I want to sound like a cello, uh, not like an English yeah. horn. <laughs> Can we hear any of that recording or no? What do we have? Yeah. So anyway, that gives a, yeah, yeah, a, we a can, reason I know the time. to do it next time. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll figure we'll, out. We'll, well, people can listen on YouTube. It's, it's also, available yeah. on every, right. uh, uh, right. you know, Wonderful. every online service. It's, it's available. Right. Well, put it up again so people can make note of, uh, yes. of the... Uh, you can hear on Tidal or Spotify yeah. or places like that, Apple <laughs> Music or... But the orchestra sounds great. And when I oh. listen to it, I don't listen, no, I don't listen to the English horn. I listen to the orchestra. They sound great. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well you do great. well with well, the We've made some discoveries here and some yeah. connections. Absolutely. Some wonderful connections. <laughs> wow. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time, for having me here. I Thank am honored you. to be you with you guys. I, uh, we couldn't have chatting with you, and I think this sounds like a nice you, collaboration one of that our we should wonderful start working on. Yes. Because uh, yeah, I'll have Puerto to have Rico. you guys over and e interview you. Okay, anytime to. you want Kiko to. Would <laughs> be thrilled. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we we're going to have a l more of uh, the Puerto Rican musicians, the young musicians, next week. Uh, there are a few pianists yes. that are coming to a play. We're going to open the place with keeping the six feet dis, uh, distance. Yeah, the and Cannon Club and the will mask and things be like that. open for next uh, weekend. For next oh. weekend. And, so uh, that sounds on great. Thursday right. and, and uh, with weekend. limited uh, yeah, seating mem and members. Seating and I think and, yeah. at that point we will have some of our young musicians yes. come over and play these poor pianos that have been Having sitting play around. For Two Although months, Kiko's going to play on Saturday. I will play on Saturday. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Campeche is well, waiting for Ah, uh, Campeche. Uh, is Campeche. It, it looks like I'm, fro I'm frozen, but you can hear me, right? We yes. can hear you. Yeah. yeah. He's okay. a Maluka Ca cockatoo. And he it's has had a long experience with music because he's 23. And wow. the music has been happening here. He has attended many concerts. He's very uh -huh. well behaved. He sits very well here waiting to hear the next concert that's coming and He along. has a good memory, so he'll remember you. And uh, he definitely remembers some of the people. Miriam yes. Conte, who was here, played a whole program for him alone. Mm. I just, I just want to know, he sat on. <laughs> is he a tenor or a soprano? Um, I'm not quite sure where he'd like to classify like coloratura. <laughs> So Maybe coloratura. Yes. Some good <laughs> screaming when, but I, he's a good listener. Yeah. But he, yeah. he does a little Ima Sumac too. I, he has a quite. Oh. Uh, does high. he imitate the, the the sound of the fo telephone ringing or something like that? No, no, that's, that's not. The, no. That's Rembrandt. That's the uh, African Grey who answers, yeah. rings and answers his own phone. But this one will. Oh, you have. Yeah. You have yeah, an African Grey. He's across the room. If uh, oh, those. somebody was around to bring him over, but. I don't know if, if those guys are incredibly smart. Yeah, incredibly yes, smart. They are very here smart. Here comes Rembrandt. And when we say a joke, he yeah. starts laughing afterwards. He's got all. Yep. Oh. He's got all. Come stand up. Come here. Yeah, he's clicking uh -oh. and clucking today. He doesn't want to be on camera. No, he's he shy. Does. He loves the camera. Yeah. Actually, he's pretty good. But he's but the ringer. Hello. And, uh, uh, any sound that's out there, he's. I Sometimes I hear the ringing and I, uh, the, the, t the phone ringing and all. I say, where's the phone? I see him. And uh, he and Campeche, are, they tolerate each other. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. I wouldn't put them in the same cage at this point, no. But they know they're brothers, brothers in music. Yes. And, uh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Brothers in music. <laughs> anyway, we, this is been so Well, fun thank to you talk so much, Pedro, you, for, Pedro, for this opportunity to have this wonderful with time with you. And fun and to hear about yeah. your projects and your wonderful recording there that I think right. we'll all have to uh, hear on right. YouTube and thank you. buy yes. the album. What a wonderful and title, uh, Bel Canto. We can collaborate for the English horn. with. Uh, what you're doing, and we'll, Kiko will be glad to go in with you and yes. chit chat about his accomplishments Everything. and uh, if what we're trying to do. So it's really, yeah, and this is wonderful. And I'm sure that 
It's been very interesting for you to do this, particularly after this whole COVID stuff started. So it makes yes. it a lot more uh, yes. important to share the music. And I think there are a lot of listeners at home who are quite appreciative of the time yes, that well. you're spending and doing this and sharing. And I know that we're getting a nice following. There's a lot of yes, people we are. We tuning are. in. Yeah. and. Uh, so thank well, you. Well, I hope you again. continue to. And we'll thank have you, you back. Kiko. Thank you. Thank you. Pedro. It's my pleasure. Wonderful you guys stay be. safe, okay? You too. You too. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you so wonderful much. Wonderful to visit with you, Pedro. Yeah. It's been wonderful. Likewise. So. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. So, another one. And I wonderful think what he's guys. doing is I had no idea. Yes, yes. That's I that's had no idea that he had a good people following around of doing people listening to wonderful uh, thing, the yeah. interviews, yeah. which is kind of a similar thing that yes. uh, we're doing. Uh -huh. Ours came out of COVID because uh, we just started it because we thought it was a great time to yes, share the music. Absolutely, but, yeah. And yeah. certainly a great time to find the musicians mm -hmm. because a lot are sitting at home with not that much uh, time that they uh, can s say no. They don't say no, they say, oh, of course. <laughs> what else have I got to do? Right. We'd love to be, but anyway, a wonderful. Thank you so you much to our audience and uh, to remind you tomorrow, uh, we, we still have, we're planning to have Luis Fred, a trombonist from Puerto Rico also. We'll give you more details and then on Friday, Christian Benitez from New York, and Saturday is Jan's birthday. So and we'll you're going to hear Campeche sing. He's planning uh, to sing. Yes, he's Happy birthday. Sing. Happy birthday. <laughs> so thank you, and don't Wonderful forget to dad. follow us at the Canon.club. Uh, the Canon.club. And, and the YouTube we are channel. There with our YouTube's past performances. Right. YouTube, we're, uh, and Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, we're kind and of we're working Instagram. on spreading ourselves around. Right. So join us and hope to see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. Nice to be nice with you. <laughs>